Oh, good. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. So thank you. <laughs> okay. So I'm Angie Kirby. I'm the, like he said, the education outreach coordinator for Kiprick. Um, I'll be presenting on a little bit on find help now, Kentucky.org, but my main focus will be on find recovery housing now, ky.org. So find help now, Kentucky.org, it launched in 2018. Um, it's the only near real time substance use disorder treatment locator resource tool in Kentucky. Um, a basic search takes less than one minute from the landing page. Um, a search can be done from the landing page using uh, the filters who needs help by gender location, the type of treatment and the payments that are accepted. Um, and then curated searches can be accomplished by utilizing more than the 70 plus advanced filter options. So a user can filter by using um, what type of treatment they're seeking, such as long term residential, um, short term residential detox. Um, and then uh, so the focus of find help now Kentucky.org is to establish and maintain partnerships with the providers and the facility personnel registered on the website. It helps to ensure that the treatment availability options are kept up to date. And so this is some of the analytics from uh, February 2nd, 2018, when it launched up until the end of October. So you can see that there has been hundreds of thousands of searches on the website. Um, we use Google Analytics to track how the website is used and by who. And then, so find recovery housing now, ky.org. We launched on September 28th um, of last month, and it's the first of its kind near real-time recovery housing availability locator for Kentucky. Um, you'll see some of our partners that we worked with in collaboration um, get help. They built our back end of the website, which the um, uh, the recovery housing owners and operators update. And then the Fletcher Group, the Kentucky Recovery Housing Network, what they're known as Kern. I'll go into more detail about them. And then the Department of Public Health, Kentucky Department of Behavioral Health Developmental Int Intellectual Disabilities. That's a mouthful. Um, APAC Software, which is our software development company, and then Vimark, which is our marketing company, and then Safe Project. They're an Ohio organization that helped inform the website development process. So these are some of the analytics that we have collected since the launch on September 28th. That's supposed to say 2022, not 2002. <laughs> um, yeah, so we've had... I, a good amount of searches that and we've heard good, really good feedback from recovery housing owners and operators and also community partners who've actually used the website to find recovery housing for clients or just people they know. So some of the features of the website are there's a basic search option um, from the from the landing page, you can search by who needs help location and population such as men, women, men with children, trans men, trans women. Uh, there are more than 40 additional filters. Uh, we are working on creating even more, kind of like find help now, ky.org. There's also a guided search tool, which for people who don't know much about recovery housing, they're able to answer a, a set of questions and then um, they, will, they will be led to a result page with houses that could potentially meet their needs. Um, and then you have resources. Um, so we have how to get how to get a driver's license, how to um, enroll in Kentucky Connect, uh, SNAP benefits, and then best practices guides. And we also have a glossary. So it's for terms that some people may not know um, on the website. They can go and look at it. And then we also have products that you can order for free of, free of charge. They are mailed to you from us. Um, we have QR stickers and the flyers and pocket cards. And then, so in order to be on the website, houses have to be an Oxford house or they have to be certified by the Kentucky Recovery Housing Network. And in order to be listed on the website, they have to, if they're not certified, they have to apply and get certified within six months by uh, Kern. And then, so for the requirements for them to maintain their availability is they update once a week once a week they'll receive an email saying hey, it's time to update your your bed availability and then they can go and do it it takes less than one to two minutes um 
if updates are not completed within nine days after the first notification, they go unpublished until they go back in and update their availability. And then here at Cape Rig, we have a dedicated staff to train recovery housing owners and operators on updating the process. So we, if they have an issue and don't know how to do something, they can reach out to us and we will have a meeting with them and show them. So this is an example of a house profile. A lot of you may know about Beacon House in Louisville. Um, so on the housing profile, there is the name. It'll show if it has available housing. I don't know if you can see it. Yes, so it'll have available beds and then has a house description, location, um, addresses can be hidden uh, by recovery housing owners and operators. It automatically does it when they claim their profile and they create it, but they can show it if they choose to. Um, it also shows the population served, house rules, rent, how much rent is, is it by month, is it by week, then amenities like Wi-Fi, linens, laundry, and then the types of payments accepted, cash, um, checks, credit card, that kind of thing. Um, and then it also has resident requirements. So it has if they are um, how many days they have to be free of using substances. Um, and then transportation services, like do they have, like they're, like does the house have its own van or can you park your car there? Are you allowed to have a car? And then services offered that are either in-house or off-site. And then also you can also link the application process so residents can get an idea of what to expect. So Kern, they are our National Alliance for Recovery Residences affiliate for the state of Kentucky. They're housed in the Department of Behavioral Health, Development, Developmental and Intellectual Disabilities. Um, NAR certification in the state of Kentucky is completely free um, for right now. Um, NAR created a set of standards for recovery housing to ensure that people who are seeking recovery housing have access to safe and quality recovery housing to ensure that they're not being led to these houses that aren't supportive in their recovery. And then the certification process. Um, so we actually created a streamlined um, process. So recovery housing owners operators can apply through their dashboard on find recovery housing now ky.org. Um, they're able to upload all their documents and then they're also able to see the pro where they are in the stages of getting certified. And then we'll go over NAR a little bit. Um, NAR's mission statement is to support persons in recovery from addiction by improving their access to quality and recovery residences through standard support services, placement, education, research, and advocacy. So there are four levels to NAR. Um, Kentucky, Kern can only certify up to level three. Um, level four is considered AOD, AODE and BHSO licensed facilities. Uh, but level one is peer run. Um, they're kind of like Oxford House. And then you have monitors. So there's a house manager or a senior resident. There's policies and procedures. Um, and then, super, then level three is supervised. Um, it's a, there's more, um, there's a more administrative stuff versus a level two. Um, and then there's also life skills development emphasis. And then this is kind of what I think everyone wants to see. All right. So I don't know if it's going to let me do it. There we go. So this is our landing page. Um, when you go to our landing page, you'll see the search box at the very top. So this is where you can do just a basic search. Um, and then at the top right, you have resources, products, and glossary. And then owners and operators can also log in from this page. Right here is where the guided search is. And then down here, you'll have just kind of the, the featured resources we have. So we have um, a link to Kern. So it provides more information to people using the website. And then there's, uh, is recovery housing right for you? And then recovery housing, the, it's the part of the continuum of care. And then also we have a um, resource that talks about the treatment versus recovery because that's one of the biggest barriers we came across is some people don't understand the difference between treatment and recovery housing. And there's a big difference. And so I'm gonna do a search and show you. So um, we have 
different labels here. So this is for our purposes, just for tracking. Um, but you can choose whichever one you. Angie, can you say a little bit? We can't see that at all. Oh, you maybe you could read out some of those. Oh, so there. sorry, Gina. <laughs> so you have um, friend or family member, and then you have individual seeking recovery housing, healthcare professional, substance use disorder treatment professional slash provider, and then a criminal justice professional, and then a recovery housing operator or staff. So I'm going to do one real quick. So I'm going to do one for the city I live in. And then for women. Okay. So when you do a search, um, it will automatically show houses with available um, with availability. Um, at the top, you can uncheck it and it'll show you more houses. I'm going to go back to that. And then so I'm going to click on a profile. And then this is what you'll see. Um, you'll see the available beds It'll either say available beds, um, call for availability, or wait list. And you can see uh, owners and operators can also show photos of their houses. So people can get an idea of what the house looks like. And then you can has house rules and then has t tobacco use policies and then also what types of MOUD they accept. Um, so they can pick whichever ones they accept or select all and then their rent and then amenities payments accepted the bed types um, It'll also show like how many beds they have how many bathrooms they have. And then transportation. And then we also, for resident requirements, we also have this little section for um, owners to fill out when they're filling out the profile that for correctional histories, they do not allow because a lot of recovery houses don't allow sex offenders, violent offenders. Um, so arson is a big one in the recovery housing community uh, that they do not allow. Yeah. And then we also have services and programs down here and they're broken down by referrals and services available and then the ones that that can be provided off site, then also places that are in walking distance like grocery stores gas stations. Uh, pharmacies restaurants and then also, the, like I said, has the application process down here, so if a screening is required a background check a breathalyzer. And then you can also filter even more some of these by using our advanced filters so you can go to we have resident acceptance and you can go by population and then correctional history allowed. Um, then there's a sliding scale so you can pick um, where kind of you want to be with rent. Um, and then housing options, you can pick a house that has MOUD friendly and also like the different NAR level. Um, then you have resident requirements like mandatory drug testing house meetings smoking allowed um, the thing with being NAR certified is they are part of the standard is houses have to have house meetings because it's very peer driven. And then transportation like is it near public transportation um, is there free parking um, is there in house transportation services personal vehicle allowed and then they can also filter by different services. Um, the types of recovery programs like AA, MA, and then faith based programs. And, and then for the resources, so we have close to, we have 28 resources on here. Um, these uh, people are able just to click on them. Like, so earlier I talked about how to get a driver's license, that was a highly requested. Um, resource just because a lot of people who come out of treatment they don't know they don't have a license or they lost it and they or they don't know how to do it so this was created uh to show them uh what to do uh, it gives them steps um all the links and the resources are clickable so people can just click on them and then it gives them like the cost and then what kind of id forms of id are accepted and then let's see and then we have products um these can be ordered from the website um, and they take usually five to seven business days to be mailed out and you'll receive them. Um, we actually have some of the QR stickers out front at the table, uh, so you can grab one on your way out. 
Yeah, it's on the pamphlets too, yes. Um, Cause we have brochures and then we have pocket cards. And then we also have this dual flyer that has what fine help now is and then also fine recovery housing now because they both go together. And then these are free too. So they get mailed to you for free. And then we also have a glossary. So terms that are used throughout the website that someone may not know, um, such as abstinence. Um, then we also have a definition for Kern um, and it explains a little bit more about them. And then mutual aid, mutual help organizations, uh, not my backyard, which is a big stigma that recovery housing faces. Um, and then smart recovery, social model of recovery. We also do have the, um, the sources cited from where the definition came from. So people can look them up. And then, and then so for resources, if someone doesn't see a resource that they think would be a good resource to be on here, they can actually go to, where's it at? At the very bottom it says recommend a resource to add and they can fill this out and send us a copy of it and we can look it over and we can add it if we think it's a good fit. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, this is also my information. And then it has the mail at fine recovery housing ky.org. And can I tag on to that just a, a couple of things? Um, when we started finding out now, Kentucky's in a really unique position, I think, and some of and, and to tie that into what this group is, and I think this that some of you are, are currently taking. Um, I can remember back before when our team was around in the state, we had a ton of conversations in this room with Office of Directional Policy, Police and Fire, and even as in public health and behavioral health, about just what was the Snarkin stuff we should be doing. And we saw that with Casper. We were some of the first people that had that discussion in this room about what Casper was going to be and how we could do that in the Foster Association. It's been around for a long time. Um, and so when we started the, the Find Out Now, it was literally to get people in the treatment as quickly as possible, uh, hoping that providers and, and treatment people would update and say, like every 24 hours, yes, we have beds, yes, we have the ability to bring people in, yes, we have, you know, all of these different. Things. And the same thing, the next stage was the recovery housing. And I, I, I said all that to say this, I think a lot of you probably have also been to the, the abatement Kentucky, uh, town hall meetings. And what we're really, really hearing from us is safe housing. We don't just need sober living, we need safe sober living. And we need a lot of people out there doing more on it. So there's the um, so I, th I think what we're going to do is, is also have the emphasis on, on making sure that houses that come into this website are as much as we can try to be safe. And so that's what the certification, and we're hearing that from, from lots of different people, is that we do need to make sure uh, as, a, as a community, as a state, as a population, that we need safe housing for those. And we get a lot more on it. And so there's also the ability to, to, to sign up and, you know, you've got Angie and you've got Catherine and you've got these people. When you uh, email or hit those little links for more information, it goes straight to these people right here. So, yeah. so they're going to be answering you. So if you know of other recovery homes that are not listed on here, this is sign up on. I mean, we're looking for more and more and more. And the same thing with treatment providers for fine help now. We're trying to make this as easy as possible. Um, so this is still very new. So is Find Help Now, the treatment locator. If you see problems, let us know. We, we, we work daily with the software people who are in Lexington. They're home run folks. And um, uh, so this is really something that, that I think is key on us. And, and we really want your feedback on this as we move forward. Um, currently, we have 136 houses on the site. Um, 62 have availability. Um, right now, Oxford House is actually working on adding all their 106 houses, I think, to the website. So there'll be even more availability. And then we have more houses that are reaching out and onboarding. Does every county have a house? 
No, they do not. Um, Western Kentucky is a big one. Um, Eastern Kentucky, I think it's Southwestern Kentucky. Is that like Bowling Green? There are some houses there, but you, uh, Lexington, uh, Louisville area, and then Northern Kentucky, they have more houses versus other areas of the uh, state, just because, especially in Western Eastern Kentucky, you have a lot of stigma about it. And then a lot of those houses are very cautious of people knowing about their house because they don't want to be shut down because they think, oh, someone's going to come in and shut us down if there's any type of third or third party organization certifying houses. So that's their, they're very cautious of people. Um, is there any availability for somebody who wants to do that's not recovery, um, say for mental health or some house population? Is there any, any, anything like that available to folks that you guys or anybody in the world? It's a conversation that popped up yeah. two or three times in the last couple of weeks with some of our folks in, in town. And it's, um, I think it's a program that has uh, been implemented in some states. I mentioned Nebraska has a wonderful model for okay. pure recovery housing. We can talk. Yeah. <laughs> well, include us in on that conversation as well. Yeah. yeah. There, there's some discussion about needing to maybe do something around folks uh, who uh, are um, uh, looking at suicide prevention and then needing to set out some impact. Okay. So I think yeah. That's yeah, that peer support, the peer respite is what you're looking for. So. Yeah, I think <laughs> Will you loop me in on that too, you know? Because. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm working with uh, Catherine on a grant with the Department of Behavioral Health uh, to expand on Find Help Now to include mental health services specifically. Yeah. Um, and looking at inpatient, outpatient. Any resources we can find and grab and put together um, so people can find it all over the place. So, this is, so Hayspan is a great place to talk about this stuff. And I'm going I'm to shut up now. But, but this is a great conversation because you all give us feedback on what we can do better and surface things that, that we haven't gone off. So please come back. Um, yeah, and then my email is also um, on this PowerPoint. Once he sends them out, you can send me an email if you have any questions.